James bustled in. What's that, Duck? He snorted. Are you afraid of bees? They're only insects after all, so don't let that buzzbox diesel tell you different. His name is Boko, and he didn't. We... I wouldn't care, interrupted James. If hundreds were swarming around, I'd just blow smoke and make them buzz off. Buzz, 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 retorted Duck. The next morning, James arrived at the station to collect his coaches. The passengers were excited and keen to get on board. The platform was crowded and the porter was in a hurry. Mind your backs, he shouted. Then there was trouble. The beehive fell and broke open. The station cleared like magic. James heard a familiar buzzing. The bees were too cold to be cross, so they buzzed around the fireman, hoping he'd mend their hive. But he didn't understand, nor did his driver. So the bees turned to James. His boiler was nice and warm. Buzz off! Buzz off! hissed James. One bee burnt his foot. Ooh, ah, phew, phew! The bee thought James had burnt him on purpose. So it stung James right back on the nose. Eee! whistled James. He had had enough. So had his fireman and driver. They didn't notice till too late that they had left all their coaches behind. They tried everything to get rid of the bees. First they spun on the turntable to no avail. They tried washing them off. But the bees clung harder to James's warm boiler. Then they tried smoking them off by going through a long tunnel. But still the bees wouldn't go away. It's no good, James, said his driver. We'll just have to go back to the orchard and fetch another hive. James's reply was drowned by the sound of buzzing. The vicar was waiting anxiously for James. When he arrived, the bees swarmed straight into their new home. Come on, James, said his driver. What you need now is a good hose down. Later that evening, James was resting in the shed when the vicar came to see him. Thank you for saving my bees, he said. It's a pity it's not Christmas. Then we could call you James the Red-Nosed Engine. Everyone laughed. Even James. But instead, they decided to call James the Bee's Knees, which means they thought he was more useful than ever. Percy and Duck like working at the harbour by the sea. On a clear summer's night, there is no better place to be. The big ships bring passengers. Cargo ships carry machinery and other things. Duck and Percy puff backwards and forwards with the crates of cargo as they are loaded and unloaded by the quayside. One morning, Duck and Percy noticed that the horizon was packed with sails, flapping against the blue sky. I wish I could sail to faraway lands, sighed Duck. Engines can't go sailing, snorted Percy, because engines can't float. Duck still had his dreams. Suddenly they were rudely interrupted. Wakey, wakey, hovered Harold. I'm looking at the boat, replied Duck. That's the regatta, whirred Harold. Lots of boats, lots of races, great fun. I hover around in case I'm needed. Do you go to the horizon? asked Duck. Yes, and beyond. I didn't know there was a beyond, whispered Percy. Do you go to other places at sea? continued Duck. Certainly. I can land on ships, you know, anywhere, anytime. Goodbye. Duck sighed. He went on talking about the regatta all day. Percy lost patience. Well, Duck, I'd rather have my wheels on solid ground. Our rails can take us to all the places we could ever wish to see. That's an emergency, 
called Duck's driver. I'll check with the harbour master. He returned with bad news. A man taking part in the regatta has hurt his hand. We're to take him to the hospital at the next station. Harold's bringing him now. Come on. Good to see you again, Duck, word Harold as he landed carefully on the platform. The man was gently helped to safety. My job is to stay at sea in case of other emergencies. Otherwise, I would take this gentleman to hospital myself. Must fly. Goodbye. Duck set off on his journey. Soon he was steaming well and his wheels were thundering along the track. When they reached the station, the man thanked everyone and Bertie got ready to take him to hospital. You look splendid flying along the line, Duck, glowed Bertie. No wonder they call you Great Western. Percy's right, Duck thought to himself. Engines are happiest when their wheels are firmly on the rails. That night, Percy and Duck stayed a little longer at the quay. The air was warm and the sea calm. There's a shooting star, said Duck. Don't be daft, laughed Percy. It's Harold. Look, he's hovering overhead. Something fluttered down towards Duck. His driver caught it. It's a flag from the regatta. Harold's giving it to you as a present, Duck. That was kind of Harold, whispered Duck. He may have whirly arms instead of wheels, but he seems to understand just what an engine needs. Duck still wonders about the lands beyond the horizon, but he enjoys being with friends most of all, and I think he knows that sometimes the best travels are those we... At last, the day's work was done. The twins now became excited. They were going to use the turntable for the first time. Bill went first. This is fun, he shrieked to Ben. He didn't want to move off at all. The foreman stopped the turntable. Please make way for the other engines, he ordered. Bill did so, but unfortunately the foreman had accidentally stopped the turntable in the wrong place. Bill was on the wrong track and there was Ben puffing directly toward him. The engines came to a grinding halt. They gazed grimly at each other. I was here first, said Bill. But you're in my way, protested Ben. You'll have to back up again. I won't. You will. I won't. The fat controller came to stop the noise. If you don't behave, I shall not allow you here again. The next day, Ben was still grumpy. That Bill, imagine getting in my way on the turntable. He's a really silly engine. The way I heard it, sighed Boko, it sounded like you were both to blame. Fuh, you must have heard it all wrong. The twins grumbled about each other all day. Even kind Edward lost patience. All this grumbling spreads bad atmosphere in the yard. You're quite right, and that's why I've come up with a plan. Boko whispered his plan to Edward. Then his driver told the fat controller. I'll start making arrangements straight away. The next morning, he called Bill and Ben into the yard. Boko is taking a special train to the harbour. His regular heavy goods train is waiting on the siding. You can pull it together. But, but, protested Bill and Ben, who were still not speaking to each other. Good, I knew I could rely on you two. I'll take the train myself, huffed Ben. Go right ahead, said Bill. Ben was coupled up to the train of trucks but they were too heavy for him to move alone. Go on, teased Bill. 
I can't, said Ben. Then suddenly both twins laughed. I don't think we'll take turns this time, Ben, said Bill. I think we'd better pull together. Ben was delighted. It was good to be helping each other. Best of all, it was good to be friends again. He was just shunting, ready for his return journey, when... That sounds like a steam engine, he thought. The hiss came again. Who's there? asked Douglas. A whisper came. Are you a fat controller's engine? I am Prudit. Thank goodness. I'm Oliver, and I'm with my brake van Toad. We've run out of coal and have no more steam. But what are you doing? Escaping? From what? Scrap? Douglas shivered. Then he remembered Edward's story about saving Trevor. I'll be glad to help you, he said. It'll have to look as if you're ready for scrap, and I'm taking you away. The drivers and firemen agreed to help too. Everyone worked fast. No time to turn around, panted Douglas. I'll run tender first. Come on. But before they could clear the station, they were stopped. Aha! exclaimed the foreman. A Great Western engine and a brake van too. You can't take these. Ah, but they're all for us, said Douglas's driver. See for yourself. The foreman looked all over Oliver. Seems in order. Right, away guard. That's a neat thing, puffed Douglas. We've had worse, smiled Oliver. And they forged ahead. It was daylight when their journey ended. We're home, cried Douglas. Shh, said his driver. There are the works. We'll find a place for Oliver. Oliver said goodbye and thank you, and Douglas puffed away. The next day, Douglas told the other engines all about Oliver. The fat controller will have to know, said James. Douglas should tell him at once, added Gordon. Well, here he is, said a voice. Now, what's this all about? Beg pardon, sir, but we do need another engine. Yes, sir, ventured Gordon. A steam engine, sir. I'm afraid that unless one is saved from scrap, there's little hope. But, sir, burst out Douglas, one has. Yes, indeed. And thanks to you, Douglas, he is now at our works. Oliver is just what we need for Duck's branch line. This is easy, they said to each other. We know all about trucks. But I'm afraid they didn't. No need for that, shouted the trucks as the twins push them into place. We'll show you around. We want to help. Thank you very much, said Bill and Ben. The trucks giggled and began their tricks. Evening came. The yard was in a dreadful muddle. The twins had let the trucks tell them where to put things. Gordon and the passengers waited impatiently outside the station while Bill and Ben tried to sort things out. But by the time Gordon was able to leave, it was very late indeed. Next day, the twins were working at the quarry again. That's a strange noise, gasped Bill. I've never heard a noise like that before. I have, whispered his driver nervously. It sounds like a rock slide to me. Then came the alarm. Danger, clear the quarry, shouted the quarry master. Workmen scrambled into the trucks. Thank goodness we're here, said the twins. They were just puffing out of the quarry when... Help! Wait for me! A 
workmen had been left behind. Ben waited as the man climbed quickly aboard. The twins left the quarry just in time. Everyone was safe, but rubble lay all around. Oh dear, said Bill, this wasn't our fault. I hope the Fat Controller will understand. And indeed he did. The next day he arrived with Edward. Bill and Ben, you still have a lot to learn about trucks, don't you? But you acted quickly and bravely in an emergency. So, three cheers for Bill and Ben, our heroes. Hip, hip, hooray, hooray, hooray. Oh, thank you, sir, said Bill. Being called heroes, well, it's, it's, it's a really nice surprise, laughed Ben. Really reliable, that's me, panted James proudly. Pity the same can't be said for Percy. Peep, peep, goodbye. What was that about? gasped Annie and Clarabel. That was trouble. Trouble for James, just wait and see. Percy was back in the yard and busy shunting. He had the trucks in good order and was making up for lost time. But the station master had bad news. What's happened? asked Percy's driver. James's brakes have jammed. We need Percy's help right away. Percy quickly set off to the rescue. He found James stuck on the line and looking glum. Percy couldn't help laughing. Got yourself in a jam, eh, James? What you might call a sticky situation. Be quiet, said James. It's not funny having jam breaks. And not very reliable either, teased Percy. I am surprised you let it happen, James. Nothing should stop us engines. That's enough, Percy, said his driver. Can you push these trucks? Of course I can, whistled Percy. There's no time to lose. James has done too much of that already. James angrily hissed steam as Percy was coupled to the trucks. Off we go, said Percy. I'll have to go fast to get there in time. These big engines are so unreliable. Be careful, Percy, called his driver, but Percy was in a hurry. He didn't see that the points had failed and that he had been diverted into a siding. Look out, Percy, shouted his driver and applied the brakes. But it was too late. The driver and the fireman had jumped clear, but squashed fruit squirted all over Percy. The Fat Controller arrived. Percy, you are not to blame for the points failure, but I do not run a jam factory. Yes, sir. No, sir. And Percy squelched sadly away. That night, the shed was silent. James and Percy felt very sorry for themselves. At last, Thomas spoke. You know, he said to no engine in particular, there's more than one way to get jammed. We all learned that today. Still there was silence. What's more, continued Thomas, we also learn that sometimes when engines help each other out of a jam, things can still go wrong. So, said a voice, so finished, Thomas, that means we learned a lot today. And therefore, then came a call. The two engines had not worked with diesel for a long time. What are you doing here? gasped Doc. Your worthy fat, er, uh, Sir Topham Hatt sent me. I hope you are pleased to see me. I am to shunt some dreadfully tiresome trucks. Shunt where? said Percy suspiciously. Where? Why, from here to there, purred Diesel. And again from there to here. Easy, isn't it? With that, Diesel, as if to make himself quite clear, bumped some trucks hard. Woo! screamed the trucks. Grrr, growled Diesel. 
Percy and Doc were horrified they did not trust Diesel at all. They refused to work and would not leave their shed. The fat controller was enjoying his tea and ice bun when the telephone rang. So there's trouble in the harbour yard. I'll be there right away. Diesel was working loudly and alone. Cargo lay on the quay. Ships and passengers were delayed. Everyone was complaining about the fat controller's railway. Percy and Duck were sulking in their shed. What's all this? demanded the fat controller. Uh, we're on strike, sir, said Percy. Yes, added Duck. Beg pardon, sir, but we won't work with Diesel, sir. Then, in a quiet, hurt voice, he added, You said you'd sent him packing, sir. I have to give Diesel a second chance. I am trying to help you by bringing Diesel here. Now you must help me. He was the only engine available. Percy and Duck went sadly back to work. Next morning, things were no better. Diesel's driver had not put his brakes on properly and Diesel started to move. He went bump straight into Percy. Percy had an awful fright. Wake up there, Percy, scowled Diesel. You have work to do. He didn't even say he was sorry to Percy. Later, Diesel bumped the truck so hard that the loads went everywhere. What will the fat controller say, gasped Percy. He won't like it, said Duck. So who's going to tell him, I wonder, said Diesel. Two little goody-goody telltales like you, I suppose. Percy and Duck did not want to be telltale, so they said nothing. Diesel, thinking he could get away with his bad behaviour, was ruder than ever. Next day, he was shunting trucks full of china clay. He banged the trucks hard into the buffers, but the buffers weren't secure. The silly trucks were sunk. Henry could remember the day long ago when he and Toby brought some new trees to be planted and Terence and Trevor helped haul them into place. Now he could see the trees growing amongst the others on the hillside. Henry always felt better for being here. He couldn't really explain why, but his driver understood. It's peaceful, he said to Henry. But one night, everything changed. The engines were resting in the shed. Listen, said Thomas. Can you hear a strange whistling sound? It's the wind blowing outside our shed, replied Toby, but I've never heard it like this before. Do you know, added James, if Gordon wasn't here now, I'd say it was him thundering by with the express. All the engines laughed, except Henry. I hope the wind won't harm the forest. By morning, the fierce winds had gone, but their damage was done. Henry's driver came to see him in the yard. Trees have fallen on the line. We must help clear the tracks. Donald set off with the breakdown train, and Henry followed. Trees lay everywhere. The hillside now looked so bare. Henry felt sad. What will happen to all the animals who live here, he thought. When Henry's flat trucks were full of logs, he took them to the timber mill, where they would be turned into furniture and other things. Henry was glad the wood was being put to good use, but he was still sorry to lose part of his forest. Hello, Toby, said the fat controller. You do look glum. I'm sad about the trees, said Toby, and so is Henry. The forest is a special place to him. Now some of it is gone. We'll soon put that right. I have an important job for you, Toby. I would like you to take some trucks to the forest. When the trucks arrived, Toby was delighted. They were full of splendid young trees, 
all ready for planting. Now Henry can see the trees growing strong and tall, and the animals are coming back. At the next station was a sign. All trains must wash down daily. James had just finished being cleaned. Come on, Gordon, said his driver. You'll feel better after a good hose down. Pa! said Gordon and angrily let off steam. You're a very naughty engine, said Gordon's driver. Now James will need another shower. You'll have to wait your turn till later. Good riddance, huffed Gordon. I'm far too busy to waste time with water. He finished his journey safely and steamed into the big station. The fat controller was waiting. So were Gordon's coaches and the passengers. Goodness gracious, said the fat controller. You can't pull the train. Henry will have to do it. Gordon, you'd better get clean straight away. Gordon was soon being washed. Mind my eyes, he grumbled. Then he pulled trucks for the rest of the day. He bumped them hard. That's for you, and you, and you. Trucks will be trucks, said James. They won't be me, snorted Gordon. I'll teach them. James got ready to take the express when Gordon returned. Be careful, warned Gordon. The hills are slippery and you may need help. I don't need help on hills, replied James huffily. Gordon thinks he knows everything. Earlier, a storm had swept Gordon's hill, blowing leaves onto the track. Even though the storm had passed, the hill was still difficult to climb. James knew this. The signal showed clear and James began to go faster. I'll do it. I'll do it, he puffed. Halfway up, he was not so sure. I must do it, I must do it. But his wheels slipped on the leaves. He couldn't pull the train at all. Help, help, whistled James. His wheels were turning forward, but the heavy coaches pulled him backwards. The whole train started slipping down the hill. His driver shut off steam and put on the brakes. Then carefully, he stopped the train. Gordon saw everything. Ah, well, we live and learn. Never mind, little James, I'm going to push behind. Later, he was still boasting. I'm the pride of the line. I saw you pulling trucks today. You're only a goods engine, snorted Gordon. James was furious. I pull coaches too. Not as much as I do, grunted Gordon. The fat controller has plans for me. James was only making this up, but Gordon believed him. What plans? Er, uh, wait and see. Oh dear, thought James, now what'll I do? Thomas was shunting shining new coaches. Good morning, James. Are those coaches for me? asked James hopefully. No, these are for Gordon's Express. I'll fetch your trucks next. But James was going to play a trick on the other engines. Actually, Thomas, I'm taking the coaches. The fat controller asked me to tell you. What about the trucks? Er, uh, give them to Gordon. Come on, Thomas, said his driver. Orders are orders. So when James's driver returned, James was coupled to the coaches and he puffed away. Thomas returned with the trucks. A few minutes later, Gordon arrived. Where's the express? Thomas told him about James, and so here are your trucks. Gordon was very cross, and so was his driver. 
Wait till the fat controller hears about this. Meanwhile, James was enjoying himself enormously. What a clever plan, what a clever plan, he chuffed. Then he saw the fat controller. Some jokes are funny, but not this one, James. You have caused confusion. Yes, sir, said James. You will stay in your shed until you are wanted. The other engines teased James. I wonder who'll be pulling the express today, said Gordon. I expect it'll be you, replied Henry. James is stuck in the shed for being silly. James felt sad. Next morning, he went back to work. Hello, whistled Thomas. Good to see you out and about again. I'm sorry I tricked you, said James. Are these my trucks? Yes, replied Thomas kindly. They are pleased to have you back. James puffed into the harbour with his goods train of trucks. One night, Percy was waiting at the junction. The main line train was late. At last, Henry arrived. Sorry, he puffed. The mail boat from the mainland was delayed. Come on, Percy, said his driver. Let's make up for lost time. Percy puffed along as quickly as he could, but the sun was already rising as he finished his work. Never mind, thought Percy. It's nice to be up and about when it's the start of a new day and there's no one else around. Percy was not alone for long. Bother, said Percy. It's that dizzy thing, Harold. Good morning, word Harold. I always said railways were out of date, but you're so slow with the post, you should give everyone their stamps back. Post haste. Percy was too tired to explain. Bird brain, he muttered. Good morning, Percy, called Duck. You're up early. No, you're wrong, sighed Percy. I'm back tired and late. He rolled into the shed and fell asleep almost before his buffers touched the bar. His driver decided to set off early that evening. Thomas was waiting at the station. Thank goodness I've a chance to speak to you. Driver said that the person in charge of the post has complained to the fat controller about the delay last night. But that wasn't my fault, replied Percy. I know, said Thomas, and so does the fat controller. But this post person wouldn't listen. Tonight, we'll just have to be quicker than ever before. The engines were just leaving the station when they heard a familiar buzzing. I say, you two, there's news flying about. Where? puffed Percy. All over the place. They're going to scrap the post train and use me instead. Wings work wonders, you know, always. Rubbish, huffed Thomas. That night, everything ran like clockwork. Thomas and Percy steamed through the stations, making good time everywhere they went. At a station, Thomas noticed a man looking cold and worried. He had missed his train home. We can give you a ride, said Thomas's driver, but it will be rather uncomfortable. Thank you, said the man. Anything's better than sitting here. Bad luck, Bertie, said Thomas. Now, if you were a steam engine, you would run on a pair of reliable rails. Huh, replied Bertie. The railway was supposed to deliver tar to mend the road two weeks ago. You can't trust a thing that runs on rails. I run on rails. You can trust me, Bertie. I'll see if I can find out what's happened. Thomas left Bertie and made his way along the branch line towards the big station by the sea. James was snorting about in the yard. It's too bad. Percy goes to work at the harbour and I do his job here, there and everywhere. Take that! Ooh, groaned the trucks. Just you wait, we'll show you! Gordon laughed. I'll tell you what, James, if you pretended to be ill everywhere, you couldn't shunt trucks here or go to the quarry there, could you? What a good idea, agreed James. Look, 
Here comes Thomas. I'll start pretending now. Thomas was sorry to see the engines looking miserable. Cheer up! It's a beautiful day. Yes, grumbled Gordon, but not for James. What's the matter? He's sick, replied Gordon. Yes, he is. I mean, I am, uh, stuttered James. I, I don't feel well at all. Don't worry, said Thomas kindly. I'll help out if you're ill. Gordon and James sniggered quietly to each other. Some of James's trucks were coupled behind Thomas and he steamed away to the quarry. The trucks were still cross. We couldn't pay James back for bumping us, so we'll play tricks on Thomas instead. One engine is as good as another. But Thomas didn't hear them. He collected all the stone from the quarry and then set off back to the junction. Danger lay ahead. Now for our plan, giggled the trucks. Go faster, go faster. Slow down, called Thomas's driver, and applied the brakes. Poor Thomas stood dazed and surprised in a muddy pond as a toad eyed him suspiciously. Bust my buffers, muttered Thomas. The day started so well, too. Duck pulled away the trucks, and Edward helped Thomas back to the junction. Suddenly, Thomas remembered about the missing tar. He told Edward all about it. That's strange, said Edward. A truck full of tar has been left at my station. That must be it. Driver will make sure it gets to Bertie now. Toby's line crosses with the main road behind the station and for a short way follows a farm lane. Frosty weather makes the muddy lane rock hard and very slippery. Toby stops before reaching the lane. His fireman halts the traffic at the crossing and then he sets off again. By using the heavy trucks to push him along, he has no trouble with the frosty rails in the lane. It is the only safe thing to do in this kind of weather. Toby warned Mavis and told her just what to do. I can manage, thank you, she replied. I'm not an old fuss pot like you. The trucks were tired of being pushed around by Mavis. It's slippery, they whispered. Let's push her around instead. On, 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 they yelled. Mavis took no notice. Instead, she brought the trucks carefully down the lane and stopped at the level crossing. All traffic halted. One in the headlamp for Fuss Pot Toby, chortled Mavis. But Mavis had stopped in the wrong place. Instead of taking Toby's advice, she had given the trucks the chance they wanted. Hold back, hold back, they cried. Grrr, up, ordered Mavis. The trucks just laughed and her wheels spun helplessly. Workmen sanded the rails and tried to dig away the frozen mud, but it was no good. Everyone was impatient. Grrr, ah, wailed Mavis. Toby was in the yard when he heard the news. I warned her, he fumed. She's young yet, soothed his driver, and... She can manage her trucks herself, interrupted Toby. They're your trucks, really, his driver replied. Mavis is supposed to stay at the quarry if the fat controller finds out. Hmm, yes, said Toby thoughtfully. He and his driver agreed that it would be best to help Mavis after all. An angry farmer was telling Mavis just what she could do with her train. Having trouble, Mavis? chortled Toby. I am surprised. Grush, said Mavis. With much puffing and wheel slip, Toby pushed Mavis and the trucks back. The hard work made his fire burn fiercely and his firemen spread hot cinders to melt the frozen mud.
Stop, stop, I've got Thomas's passengers, wailed Bertie, roaring up to the gates. It was no good, Edward was gone. Bother, said Bertie. Bother Thomas's fireman not coming to work today. Why did I promise to help the passengers catch the train? That will do, Bertie, said his driver. A promise is a promise and we must keep it. I'll catch Edward or bust, said Bertie. Oh, my gears and axles, he groaned, toiling up the hill. I'll never be the same bus again. Hooray, hooray, I see him, cheered Bertie as he reached the top. Oh, no, Edward's at the station. No, he stopped at a crossing. Hooray, hooray. Bertie tore down the hill. Well done, Bertie, shouted his passengers. Go it. Bertie skidded into the yard. Wait, wait, cried Bertie. He was just in time to see Edward puff away. I'm sorry, said Bertie. Never mind, said the passengers. After him quickly. Third time lucky, you know. Do you think we'll catch him at the next station, driver? There's a good chance, replied the driver. Our road keeps close to the line and we can climb hills better than Edward. I'll just make sure. He spoke to the station master. Bertie and the passengers waited impatiently. Yes, we'll do it this time, said the driver. Hooray, called the passengers, as Bertie chased after Edward once more. This hill is too steep, this hill is too steep, grumbled the coaches as Edward snorted in front. They reached the top at last and ran smoothly into the station. Peep, peep, whistled Edward. Get in quickly, please. The guard blew the whistle and Edward's driver looked back. But the flag didn't wave. Then he heard Bertie. Everything seemed to happen at once. And the station master told the guard and driver what had happened. I'm sorry about the chase, Bertie, said Edward. My fault, replied Bertie. The new engine arrived. What's your name, asked the fat controller. Montague, sir, but I'm usually called Duck. They say I waddle. I don't really, sir, but I like duck better than Montague. Good, duck it shall be. Here, Percy, show duck round. The two engines went off together. Soon they were very busy. James, Gordon and Henry watched duck quietly doing his work. He seems a simple sort of engine. We'll have some fun and order him about. Smoke billowed everywhere. Percy was cross. Duck took no notice. They'll get tired of it soon. Do they tell you to do things, Percy? Yes, they do, answered Percy. Right, said Duck. We'll soon stop that nonsense. He whispered something. We'll do it later. The fat controller was looking forward to hot buttered toast for tea at home. Suddenly he heard an extraordinary noise. Whee! <laughs> Bother, he said, and hurried to the yard. Duck and Percy calmly sat on the points outside the shed, refusing to let the engines in. Gordon, James and Henry were furious. Stop that noise, bellowed the fat controller. They won't let us in, hissed Gordon. Duck, explain this behavior. Beg pardon, sir. 
but I'm a great Western engine. We do our work without fuss. But begging your pardon, sir, Percy and I would be glad if you would inform these um, engines that we only take orders from you. Silence! Snapped the fat controller. Percy and Duck, I am pleased with your work today, but not with your behavior tonight. You have caused a disturbance. Gordon, Henry, and James sniggered. As for you, thundered the fat controller, you've been worse. You made the disturbance. Duck is quite right. This is my railway, and I give the orders. After Percy went away, Duck was left to manage alone. He did so, easily. A long stretch of line lay ahead. In the distance was a bridge. It seemed to Gordon that there was something on the bridge. His driver thought so too. Whoa, Gordon, he said and shut off steam. Oh, said Gordon, it's only a cow. Joe, Joe. He moved slowly onto the bridge, but the cow wouldn't shoo. She had lost her calf and felt lonely. Moo, she said sadly. Everyone tried to send her away, but she wouldn't go. Henry arrived. What's this? A cow? I'll soon settle her. Be off, be off. Moo, said the cow. Henry backed away nervously. I don't want to hurt her. At the next station, Henry's guard told them about the cow and warned the signalman that the line was blocked. That must be Bluebell, said the porter. Her calf is here, ready to go to market. Percy will take it along. At the bridge, Bluebell was very pleased to see her calf again, and the porter led them away. Not a word. Keep it dark, whispered Gordon and Henry to each other. They felt rather silly, but the story soon spread. Well, 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 chuckled Edward. Two big engines afraid of a cow. Afraid? Rubbish, said Gordon. We didn't want the poor thing to hurt herself by running up against us. We stopped so as not to excite her. You see what I mean, my dear Edward? Yes, Gordon, said Edward. Gordon felt somehow that Edward saw only too well.